core to core. I think I forgot to download our video last week. <laughs> I, uh, good morning. Good morning, Stefan. Good morning, <laughs> Jamie. Here How are things? Once again, uh, things are really well, especially because we're right here together doing this. So doing this, I like the, our weekly check-in. <laughs> our weekly check-in and check up. Yes. Check so, up to a higher level. How are things since last week? Um, it's funny, I've been dealing with new people trying to close a deal. Yeah, I've been very neutral. Yeah, I feel the same. <laughs> <That's> so <funny. laughs> I'm still kind of like, okay, yeah, feel it. <laughs> well, yeah, very neutral because I can't get ex I can't well not that I can't I won't get excited about something unless I actually believe believe it right right like so it's like the check's gotta be cashed or the exactly like the chicken has got to be in the oven or the, yeah. <laughs> or, or the you know or the or the tea is brewed whatever you want to say it's got to be actually a to a place where I can believe it's going to happen and that all the people that I'm working with are actually uh, also believe it's going to happen because if they believe, then they will actually take the steps to do the things that will write the check and send the stuff. And, yeah. you know, so that's, uh, so, I can't get excited no matter what people say. Yeah. Because I feel so similarly. <laughs> it's so strangely parallel. Um, yeah, I, I hear you. It's like everything sounds really good, but until like, yeah, till somebody commits or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's all just like kind of out there. But you yeah. know, it's it's funny because I was, I was actually telling Ken this, um, I was like, it's, it's almost weird. It's as if like, and, and I have, I've written things down. Here are the things that I'd really like to focus on and to do. If I'm going to do work, like this is the kind of work I want to do. And I, and I did, I made like a really pretty detailed list. I wrote it down. And then when I was having, I had a conversation on Friday and when I had, you know, like every conversation I've had, I almost feel like they're reading my list and I'm just like, Awesome. Did I, I didn't post it anywhere. You know, I mean, it's just, it's been so strangely parallel. Like, I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> it's so bizarre. Come on, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie's just watching. All right. But yeah, like, and, but still, it's still just like, it's moving in a, you know, like a direction that seems like it will work out, but I don't want to get, I'm still kind of like at an arm's length with it in terms of like, okay, if it, if it works out great, like it sounds really great, but until it's a done deal, it's still just a conversation. Yes. Yes. Which brings me to unconstrained. <laughs> it's like, uh, the, uh, I haven't, I haven't gone in there and just uploaded the sessions. Because, oh, I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. But the, the thing for me is I realize it is, it's like a fear of commitment to something that I really want. Yeah. Right? It's the yeah. same, the same neutral that I'm treating my outside situations. I'm treating myself with that kind of same neutral state. Right. And it's <laughs> that it's is like, so bizarre that you say that. So exactly parallel, exactly parallel. I was just, you know, I think I, I uh, shot you a, a text message about an hour ago that said, like, I'm around, I'm poking at my keyboard with thoughts and such. And one of the things I was I was writing about was my second book that I've been working on. But I've been like, I learned a lot from the first book. And I'm trying to process both the feedback and the learning, mm -hmm. but I'm also using that like, so I, I could have been done like two or three months ago, probably with my second book, but I feel like I'm 
I'm, I'm pacing myself. I'm really thinking about it and I may be overthinking about it and um, moving my priorities around. I'm like, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. And so I don't know, I'm approaching it very much how you just described your own thing. I'm doing my own thing also. I don't even want to say it's passive, but maybe like I'm, I, I think I'm not practiced enough in like mindfulness for it to just be a, a something I do naturally. I have to actually think about it, right? Like I have to actually think about how do I feel? How do I want to feel? You know, what are the steps that I need to take to pull that in? And so every action that I'm taking, I'm very, I'm very much like pulling my focus to sort of each step along the way rather than moving through it fluidly. Um, and I think it's because I'm trying to shift in some ways and, and be more mindful and more um, like feeling about it. But it's not something that comes like super naturally to me. Like I, I feel like there's a shift and so it takes practice for that to become natural. And so I'm slow at it. When we, we start new things, we're sometimes slow, right? Slow beginnings. But well, I, it, we are, and none of us like to suck, right? At the, <laughs> or at least I'll speak for myself. It's true. I don't like to suck at the, you know, when I'm doing something. So, so that first part where uh, I'm beginning, it takes a little more, takes a little more openness, a little more kindness to just say, okay, do this at whatever rate. And so this kind of neutral part there's a there might be a little bit of fear of commitment there's also a watching i'm watching myself to see what am i really committed to or what am i really interested in yes because this well again what we're doing here is one of the best parts of my week every week it's what i look i look forward to it it's clarifying it's energizing it's fun and it's absolutely positive, right? That's all, all we are doing is moving things in a bigger, larger, more forward, whatever dimension, however you wanna talk about it, but it is catalytic and positive. Yeah. And, and the, the clarifying part. And so the, so I, I'm surprised I know how quickly I can work, but I'm surprised at how slowly I am approaching this. Yep, I, I feel so similar. And I, I do find it strange. Like it's just been kind of like, okay, like I'll put, I'll put this out there. We'll see what comes back. And then when, you know, it's kind of like, okay, like we had a conversation Friday and and they told me it probably wouldn't be until next week until they could follow up because somebody's on vacation this week and you know I was like okay I can I, you know like and I'm trying to like keep my expectations tempered I guess I don't even know it's just like okay well like I felt like things were our conversation went really well all my questions have been answered I feel like I've answered everybody else's questions and now we just see what happens. Like, it's just kind of that. But I also, you know, the, I left with the expectation that I wouldn't hear anything until next week. So I've got this week where I'm just kind of like, okay, just ride with the, ride with the pace. You know, it's been like this. I mean, we've been having a conversation for, I don't know, a month maybe now, you know, mm -hmm. li little bits here, a little bit here. Like it's the you know, kind of like, well, are, are you interested in this? Are you interested in that? And because we are looking for this and we're looking for that. And I'm like, that's it. That's just right in line with what I'm looking for. So, mm -hmm. huh. How, uh, all right. And then, you know, and then I'm curious too. I'm like, I, um, and I know I've mentioned this in previous conversations with you, but you know, my, my friend having made that comment, I don't want to clip your wings. I'm like, that's, that's certainly not going to happen, but making sure I ask the right questions so that I am ensuring that I'm covering my bases that allow me the freedom I require, right? <laughs> like to, mm -hmm. to, the freedom and sort of flexibility that I want to have in my life. I don't 
I've worked a long time to have that. I think um, I'm just looking, I'm looking for certain elements to fill my time with, I guess, or to focus on. And, mm -hmm. and, and if they offer those certain elements and we line up that way, that's really exciting to me. Really exciting yeah. to me. So far, it sounds like it's, yeah, I, again, it's like they read my little paper or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's so neat. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. So I, I seriously, I had to go through that. I'm like, did I post that somewhere? Did like somebody, <laughs> did they see that? Like, no, but it's, because no. You're, you're so clear, you're resonating it. It's right? great. And so you're being met. You are being met energetically. It's really cool. It's really cool because I, you know, yeah. That's the part how. of the broad. That's the part of the broadcasting, right? We keep clarifying. We keep broadcasting. Every cell in our body is broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. But yeah, yeah, with your with your stuff too. Is it? I mean, it's still just kind of like, all right, all right. Here we well, are. <laughs> yeah. The um, where if I were, let's say if I were the boss of other people in this process, I would be pushing more tools at them. I would be I would be encouraging them, but I am just very neutral. Yeah. Right now. And a part of that might be also fear, the fear of having to be responsible for something new, the, the fear of having to be, uh, having to be good at something yeah, or the fear of having to figure something out quickly. Yeah. Oh, that's again, hits the nail right on the head because it's, I've been kind of moving at my own pace and doing what I want to do when I want to do it. And yeah, sometimes like that shift in pace, it's going to be a change of energy. And so even though like I have, I've kind of asked for everything that's right in front of me. I also, that neutral approach is like, just kind of like self-checking, like, is this really what I want? And if I step into this, I know that I can change course if I need to, if, you know, if I step in and, and then go, whoa, this is not what I thought it was. I have to back out, but I don't want to, you know, I want to be mindful and I don't want to waste anyone's time either. Like, I, I don't want, you know, we all get mutually excited about it. And then, and then it's like, oh, I made a mistake, you know, I would like to actually, like, <laughs> I don't want to work this hard. No, I don't mean it like that, but it's like, but yeah, like, is it, is it, is it going to meet me at the pace I want to be met at? I don't know. You know, so I am like, I feel like I'm very like the neutral is such a right word because I, I, I just keep questioning, right? Like, like feels right. Everything feels good. Am I, am, is that true? Or am I like convincing myself just because it was so parallel with what I had written down? Like, is that, but maybe that's, you know, that's, that's it. And did what I wrote well, down, is that right? Is, did I write it down? <laughs> well, you can make a test, right? You can always write down more stuff. You can, mm -hmm. you know, you can ask for more. Yeah. And you know? see if you are met, right? Like if you've been met at this level, so seemingly at this yeah. level to some extent, then you can, and you feel good about it, if there's positive energy behind it, then you can continue to refine, right? Yeah. You can continue to ask for more. You can continue to ask for all of the conditions that would make you feel good, right? Because you're not, I said right again, I may <laughs> not be right. <laughs> But. but I hear you though. <laughs> and, and that is actually that piece, Stefan, is exactly what I needed to hear today is, is that just because you wrote these things down, it doesn't have to stop there. It's not, that's not, the, no, that's, you can ask for more. <laughs> like I, I forget that. Well, that's, yeah, again, that's the point that we've been talking about is the beauty of being a creative human is once we create something, 
energetically or materially, there's always more to create. Yeah. Right. If we feel that we have really created it and believe in it from that place of belief or joy or love or positive energy or whatever we want to call it, then we're standing in a place where we are still have infinite creativity in front of us that there is no there is no limit i i am just blown away by some of the the photographs that are coming back from the james webb telescope yeah right there's i mean if there's anything that tells us there's more it's this james webb telescope i'm like seeing now all of a sudden and this isn't even a james webb telescope thing now there are now people have discovered or the uh, astronomers have discovered a black hole that you can see from earth with earth-based telescopes that we've totally missed yeah right again i said right <laughs> we're iteratively we're getting, better getting better we're getting better at this so there's two things that i take from that one is the infinite possibility in the universe right it is infinite and i will forgive myself for that last right and then we will continue here through the rest. so the universe is infinite even if we're looking to the far reaches of the Big Bang, there's empty space beyond that. What's beyond that? And what's beyond thinking about any of this in a time base? Like the, the light takes 100 million years to get here or a billion years to get here. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It just means it's beyond our understanding. Exactly. And then even with, within what we've been able to see up until now, before the James Webb telescope, we've still missed so many things. There's still so much to discover. There's still so much to create and understand. That blows me away. Yeah. And so within our little world, our little ambient reality, how many things do we miss every day that are milestones along our path in life that are people who uh, we should be engaged with or opportunities that we missed? And then how much do we miss just because we don't ask or believe or look for more in our lives? Right. So the, it's just the complacency. I, it's not necessarily being complacent. It's just not, it's not being present enough to really understand how vast the possibilities are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and, and that's it though. The exercise of these conversations um, have welcomed into my life a more present state of being which has I, I think reminded me because I I do feel like I've gone through these sorts of waves throughout throughout my life where I'll, I'll be like okay like the, here's some things I've written down I mean even you know <laughs> Even, even we, it's funny how it aligns often with like work goals or whatever, but like, even when, um, our first work together, um, when I left the big company and joined the smaller company, you know, there was a, a month or two of dialogue that happened between me leaving the one place and me actually joining three months, three months of time span. And there was conversation back and forth in that space of time. And the one question that the CEO of that company asked me was, what would it take to get you to join this company? And I, I said, give me a week to think about it. And I really, really thought about it. I, I thought about all the things that I needed, 
all of the things that I wanted to make my life feel like exactly what I wanted it to feel like, right? Mm -hmm. And I I made this list and I, I let it sit for a day or two and I went back to it. I modified a couple things, I added to it. And then when I finally felt good and even a little uneasy about it, I felt like I was, cause I was in a place where I was like, if they say no, they say no. And I'm no worse off than I am right now, right? So I'm gonna ask for a little more than it feels comfortable. And then I sent it off and within 15 minutes, I get an email back, done, when can you start? And I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that worked. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, you know, and, and then, then this particular situation that I'm approaching right now, different, different time in my life, different place in my life, different idea of what I need and what would feel good and what would feel like what's right for me in this time, completely different, um, completely different. But I, I went through that similar exercise of just kind of putting it all down there, communicating it. So there's no like, no miscommunication in my expectation, right? <laughs> like this is yeah. what I'm looking for. This is what I'm you know, willing to like, I don't know, as far as being like, it, it's funny, because they're like, some of this would, you know, would you would you be okay being in person? I'm like, it's, it's like training and helping people develop, like, yeah, some of that's gonna need to be in person. <laughs> like, I yes. welcome that right now. I think I need it. <laughs> you know? I mm -hmm. think I need it. I think I need it um, more than I've ever needed it in my life. And, and there's so much there's so much I have to offer to this opportunity, but there's so much this opportunity has to offer me as well in terms of learning and, and experience and mm -hmm. kind of just taking my whole, everything that I'm good at and everything that I want to be good at and kind of putting me in a, a next level direction. Um, it's how I see it. And so, you know, things that I haven't really focused on as much before, it's always been just kind of a, oh, I also am pretty okay at this. <laughs> so it's just like, but these yeah. are the things that have surfaced that I'm really excited about. And they really want to do more of and get better at. And, and yes, yeah. you know, anyway, I just talked for a really long time <laughs> without any space. <laughs> wow. It's good to hear all that because there's energy behind it. Yeah, yeah. But that's the that's the part that's it's obvious. There's energy behind it, so that's a good sign because you can pour that energy into fear, or you can pour it into anticipation, or you can pour it into more creative pursuits. But there's energy behind it. You got a little. You've got a little. Uh, <laughs> a uh, for those not watching <laughs> ernie, ernie my er, little ernie, rescue ernie, chihuahua ernie was ernie was uh d uh condensation decondensation fying <laughs> yes he <laughs> yeah. loves the condensation on the he outside loves, of my loves the cool cups. condensation on the outside of an icy water glass <laughs> Does. that's a, one of his favorite mm. uh things is to enjoy yeah. the condensation collecting <laughs> on the outer rim of my glass there huh yep good boy Ernie. but yeah he's uh he's my little podcast buddy yeah he's he's not a he's not a yapper at least during the podcast yeah you know if somebody were to come to the door that would change he does you yeah know, if somebody brings a package or whatever he gets someone he gets tried to upset. interrupt the podcast <laughs> then he, he, gets would, he would be very upset but he's pretty quiet otherwise he gets he goes when he gets excited so i'm trying i want to summarize what we've learned we've learned there's more yeah it, you know we've what? learned that even with the, even in even in areas where we think we have examined everything there's more yeah there's and, always more to add and more to and more to believe in you know it's interesting so in one of the conversations that i had on friday 
it, it was talking about like interpersonal skills and helping de designers and developers evolve in interpersonal skills. And mm -hmm. one of the points that I made is I said, you know, interpersonal skills did not come easily for me, but what I love about interpersonal skills and the study of them is that there's always a better to become. And, you know, I, I found the same when I, I used to practice yoga and I, I, I feel like I might need to get back into that. Um, but I used to practice yoga like five to six days a week for years. I did that. And it was the same thing with yoga asanas, right? Your poses. It doesn't matter how good you get at one. There's always a better or a next level like that you can take it. There's no end to it. You can yes. always work on something, whether it's in your mind or in your form or in your, you know, posture or your hold or whatever it is, there's always a further that you can take it. And it, it connects so well with what we're saying here, which I love. I love how all these things are I, connected. I, <laughs> yes. I think that's with every high level athletic pursuit. There mm -hmm. is that, there is the, there's always room for refinement. And for me, that is rock climbing. Yeah. So I've, I have this, I have rock climbing as that place where I go, where there's always more, there's always more refinement to my movement. And in the same way you practice an asana or let's say in martial arts, the same way you practice a, a kata. Mm -hmm. There's always ways to refine it. And the repetition is what takes you there, right? Yeah. The repetition is what takes you deep into the joy or into the refinement, into the, per, into the pursuit of perfection. But there, in the pursuit of perfection, there's always more perfection yeah they're always yes different places to push it and i i mean I, I also i did martial arts um for a good chunk of life and the katas that was something i mean it, it's such a great example almost like a little microcosm of the bigger thing that we're talking about here with just your own life um but with the kata that memorization and the the repetition of the sequence once you learn it, you know it, but there is always a refinement. And once your body knows the moves, your mind can actually do more to push the physical. And it, it's really, um, man, that really opens the dialogue I, to possibility, you know? Yes. I found that uh, when I started doing Aikido and going to the dojo to start learning Aikido seriously, yeah. I realized that this is the same as rock climbing. Yeah, yeah. This is, and, and then I thought, well, I can go to the dojo or I can go outside and boulder down at the, there's a bouldering area down at the university where all the climbers over the years used to hang out. Now we have formal, you know, we have gyms where you pay a membership that are more social and have more stuff to climb. But what I found beautiful about this, and it's still, it is still a component of my climbing that I don't see often in younger people is the, the quality of movement that I can generate because I have done the same boulder problems let's say 10, 15, 20 years yeah. of going down to the, what we call the UW, University of Washington, the UW Rock, where all of us geezers used to meet and climb and create boulder problems and name them. And there are hundreds and hundreds of them. That's really and cool. And some of them are extremely hard, but because, because we are there every week in the summer or several times a week in the summer and trying them and repeating them and refining the slight angle about how I put my toe on a hold or how I grip something or how long I grip something or how much pressure I put on an opposite 
a hand that is opposite of the one that's my primary grip on the rock, right? Or the, the way I, so I'm thinking about the pressure, uh, not only of how hard I'm gripping something, but the pressure against the wall or how hard I'm pulling down. And all of those things are being managed concurrently in order to actually execute a move or even just stick to the rock so that I can ponder executing the next move. And those refinements and that patience and the slowing down and understanding where every single part of my body happens to be in relation to the rock and in relation to how I need to, what I need to do to stay on the rock, that, that is something that I have, that I have 40 years of refinement. So when I climb something, it feels and I grab something, I am reminded usually of something I have done before, but it is completely unconscious, Yeah, which is the same as the martial art. You yeah. practice it over and over and over until every move is unconscious. And then you practice enough katas so that almost every situation has an analogous component to the one you're currently in. Yeah. <laughs> right, and so so when you feel something here, you know that means that something else needs to come after it. Some other move needs to come after it, and it's the same with rock climbing. I put my hand on something, and my left foot might be a little bit outside my right hand, and then I feel my body rotating, which means my right foot needs to find something to stop me from rotating, and so. But all of these things are unconscious. And yeah. so then it becomes a really beautiful sequence, like a, right? Like a Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very well choreographed. Yeah. Execution of moves. Or the, uh, the even the drunken master, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Oh man, I grew up with all that stuff. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. so. It turns out one of my neighbors used to one of my one of the neighbors that I've been working with recently. Here, he uh, he tr Bruce Lee had a gym here in Seattle. Really, in, I didn't in know the basement that. in the inner yeah Bruce Lee's in the international district here, and so this person is old enough to have trained in Bruce with Bruce Lee and Bruce That's Lee's. Really cool gym here in Seattle and there are still a few there still are a few people here in Seattle from that era it's really awesome <laughs> yeah right oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just started watching a uh, a drama on tv from San Francisco in the 19 in in the 1800s it's a and it's based on the writings of Bruce Lee Wow. It's a, about a Chinese immigrant who is kind of indentured to a Chinese crime family in San Francisco during the gold rush era. Wow. Holy cow. That sounds pretty cool. Oh, what is the name of it? I was going to say, what's it called? If we, uh, I, if you don't remember, we can, we can we, add it we to can, show notes. <laughs> we, can add it to, we can add it to the show notes. When That's you right. remember. <laughs> That's right. I've also yeah. been watching another one that I think is great for, well, there's, there's a lot of violence in it, but it's a more like cartoon, uh, cartoon like uh, graphic novel, like The Umbrella Academy. Oh yeah, you know, I started it, but I didn't keep going with it. Uh, I thought that would, I thought that you and, and, uh, that would be a cool one for you and Zia to watch, yeah. I thought. Maybe we'll have to. Like, because we'll have Zia, to Zia reminds me of characters in the Umbrella Academy. That's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Zia, we had our first day of eighth grade yesterday. Zia forgot her shoes. Like I drove, <laughs> I drove her and Gigi. So Gigi came over. And mm. granted, it's very early. Gigi got here at 5.45 so that we could leave what? at 5.55. That's um, criminal. Yeah, so there's Kids school there. Kids should not be awake. That's 
early to go to school. That is They're, criminal. Well, we live we live a half an hour away from school. And so, and that's, you know, if they take the bus, it's even longer. But I, on the first day, I always drive them because it's a kind of a kerfuffle with the first day buses almost always. So I was like, I'll drive this year. I drove last year too, but only after we waited a half an hour for buses that never came. So this year I was like, I'll just, you know, come to our house. I'll drive them. We could do our pictures, first day pictures. Anyway, so we did that. We had the first day pictures. Gigi and Z are all excited. These two have been friends, like best friends since they were two years old. Um, yeah. You know, the whole picture, this clothing experience together. And I anyway, first, yeah, so cool, right? <laughs> first day of eighth grade. And so they're just excited and they're, you know, and they're, they're, um, they have student standard attire that they have to wear, you know, fall within. And um, anyway, so then their little outfits and yeah, I don't know. Zia's pants were like flared at the bottom, like super bell bottom pants. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think, you know, I don't think to look at her feet to make sure she's got shoes not, on, but like, it's not your job anymore. To make sure <laughs> it's not, right? That's not your job anymore. It's, but she, uh, okay, we, we, you know, they're excited. They're buzzing. She grabs her backpack. We load into the car. We drive the school's a half an hour away and we, you know, get off the freeway and start navigating toward the school. And Zia goes, oh, I forgot my shoes. <laughs> and I was like, my first response was like, what? Like, how, who forgets <laughs> shoes? Like, how? And she's like, well, I have my socks on. And I, I was like, okay, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna actually, since we're, you know, five minutes from the school now, you're going to go in and wait in the office in your socks. I'll run back home and get you. But I, I want them to know that you're here. At least we tried to get you on time. And um, so you can just wait in the office. I'll bring your shoes. So I had to drive all the way back home and all the way back down. You didn't but just yeah. give her yours? We do not wear the same size. She's two sizes larger than me, her wow. feet. So, and yeah. she's tall. Like she's, she's uh, five ten. At wow grade and she's got a size 11 shoe so i was wow. just like we can share shirts we can share pants but we cannot share shoes it's the one thing that yeah i i thought about it for a second i'm like my shoes are gonna pinch your little feet all day so uh, i'll just drive home and and get them <laughs> so, so yeah. the uh, the volleyball and the basketball team haven't started recruiting her you know, it's funny that happened to me my whole life. I was never, um, those were never my strong suits and my kids don't seem super interested in those type of activities. I'm, I'm always encouraging them to try what, you know, gets them excited. Mm. If those things get them excited, great. Um, I support it, but yeah, no, she's doing Lyra. Are you familiar with Lyra? No. It's basically like, um, it's an aerial art. So like, Oh, um, the, Cirque du Soleil with, kind of stuff, but it's in the, um, in the, in the ring, in the yeah, spinning it's the ring. Hoop. Yeah. Oh. It's a little hoop. It's like, I always think of it like one of those little circles of birds it's in, but yeah. Yeah. So she started that very, very recently. I hope she sticks with it and she seems to like it so far. Our, um, my best pals, Terry and Christy, their eldest, Emma, is an aerialist who has performed uh, all around the world, actually. Wow, that's really cool. But she, her specialty is silks, but she is yeah. trained in all kinds, trained in all kinds of stuff. That's, um, that's very much how, like the place she goes, it's a circus arts. It's all the, the coaches and stuff there are uh, Cirque du Soleil people. Yeah. And so she's got some of the best people in the world to work with. <laughs> it's really cool. Well, I hope that's inspiring for her. I hope because, so too. I really yeah. hope. And if she decides she wants to switch, they do the silks, they do the hammock, they do parkour, they do um, mm. the like American Ninja Warrior stuff, you know, like whatever. American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. I get so I'm into that show Iceman sometimes. for Akbar Gabajmiamila. <laughs> and Zuri and Zuri Hall. <laughs> Welcome uh, to Las Vegas. Always, right? Oh, Vegas. 
Welcome to Las Vegas for American Ninja Warrior. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. I, I just some, I love me some American Ninja Warrior. Me too. It's one of those I could get really sucked into. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool I, to watch. I especially appreciate the women who are, ama- are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just turned that show on, a, I don't know, a week ago. A 15-year-old girl was one of the only people to complete this new course. Um, yeah. Not just women or men, but like, I mean, of both, you know? Yes. So like, 15 year old girl. She was awesome. I was just like, Whoa, I saw, I saw her or I saw Did at you? least one of those young yeah. kids. Yeah, for sure. So awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I hadn't yeah. watched it in a few years and we just, with Zia doing this, I turned it back on the other day. I was like, Oh yeah, they, I forgot about this show. <laughs> yeah. Well, all of it, uh, rock climbing, like I've taken Emma, I've been with Emma in the rock climbing gym, yeah. right? The, all of that aerial stuff naturally, uh, translates into rock climbing yeah so it's pretty cool again there's always more but the pursuit of anything like that will I give her an opportunity to refine her motivations yeah and, and that's the hope <laughs> put her passion yeah 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 that's really um you know, finding a place to channel some frustration and some, um, I don't know, whatever it is she's going through, which I, you know, I'm not in her head, so I don't know what mm-hmm. she's going through, but like, yeah, you know, we've had quite a, an adventure with, uh, with Z since she was nine. We've been down just about every road you can go down. And so, yeah, I, um, I don't know, just trying to find healthy outlets and healthy options for her. Yeah. Um, to let her know that there's always um, good places to channel frustrations and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and to um, generate creative energy. Right? Yeah. Because the frustration is just energy. That's all it is. And then it's yeah. a label. It's a label that we put on it. That's it. Yeah. It's, it is a, an arbitrary that is an arbitrary construct. Right? You can <laughs> say you're frustrated, or you can say I'm excited about the possibility that this this frustration opens yeah. up for me, or that I'm going to leave behind, or that I'm going to look for something else that isn't this frustration. Yeah. Yeah, man, that takes me down a few other mental roads as well. Um, just thinking back to a while ago we had a conversation about sometimes like the people that we keep company with right and i think mm-hmm. um i mentioned somebody who's very negative but but i like this person right and we, you see their potential i do i really do and i don't want to just be like i'm out of here like i i just don't feel like it's that you know, it's not a like, oh, you're too negative for me. I got to get out of here. There are days I have to be like, I'm not doing this today. So I've got other things going on or whatever, you know, it, it but there, there are so often, I don't know, there's something about, I don't even know if I should call it the challenge of seeing if a shift is possible in this person, but, but I enjoy the person enough that I don't want to just you know, like rule them out of my life. Well, I think these things happen naturally if we continue to pursue the things that we love and care about, that eventually there will be more or different people in your life who will fulfill that same role. Or it's not that you... It's not that we push anyone, we need to push anyone away. It's just that when our lives become more and more aligned, new people come into that. Yeah. And, and uh, time, the time we have to spend with our family, our friends, our workmates, all of that is limited. So where are we going to spend it? 
yeah. we're going to spend it with the people who bring us more. Yeah. Hopefully. Historically, we because we grew up, or again, I'll speak for myself, historically, because I grew up in a family with a lot of uh, chaos, <clears throat> violence, um, and a lot is a relative measure uh, in the terms of children. It only takes a few times to make your point, right? Yeah. If you do something really violent or terrible to your kid, that will override almost every other impression yeah. they have. But as children, we are interested in maintaining our family, maintaining the relationships and being optimistic that there is a way to change. But as children, we are trapped in a family, in a situation. So we get used to and we habituate ourselves to holding out optimism for, <laughs> for a better situation because we don't have a choice. Yeah. That's interesting we to think we of it don't, that way. We, and we don't know that we don't have it. You know, we don't know that we, we don't even know whether or not we'll have a choice ever yeah. as children. So then what do we do? We, as children, we learn to accept our situations. We either manipulate our way into something that feels better or safer, or we create a fantasy about what might happen over time or something in the future about how we relate to our families. And then as we get in, in life, we and away from our families naturally through choice, yeah. through going to college, through just starting work, through travel. Then we interact with more people, yet we still fill the roles in our lives with people who act like our family members because that's what's normal and natural. So the that, that feeling of holding out or being, I, I call it being able to tolerate people who are <laughs> negative or yeah. self-destructive. Um, that tolerance is a habituation. And so then it's, that it's also something that we need to learn to recognize and we need to learn to let go of in order to build the life that we want, to build the greater, more loving, more fun, more prosperous life that we want for ourselves and the people around us. And so as we focus on that, there's, you know, there's, there's no pushing that other stuff away. There's just welcoming the more that yeah. is. There's welcoming the better relationships. And then naturally we just spend time with those people. Yeah. And it evolves purely based on our inner guidance, our inner joy, whatever we're whatever we decide to love, the work situations, the new people that we meet. But that means we need to be open. That means we need to welcome the new people and that's why it feels weird when we actually meet people who are either kinder more positive more honorable more clear about their business intentions it feels weird but awesomely welcome often you know that is something that i've i don't know i i, I think I made a new friend in 2019 and I know I've mentioned her a couple times in our conversations, but she, we were speaking at the same event. It was like a woman's power empowerment event. And we were right. both speakers there. And like, there was just something about this woman that I, I don't fully understand. She's so different than me in so many ways, but she, we have a lot of overlap. We're both very entrepreneurial. We have a lot of ideas. I think that we're both fun. So there's a lot of overlap. She's, oh man, easily 10 years younger than me. Um, but like, just like, I don't understand all of her ways, but I'm so drawn to her because of her drive, her motivation, her optimism. Um, 
she's smart and like so i'm just so curious about her and i love that our paths crossed and so she's the one who invited me to her birthday event um in a couple weeks which i will go to and i'm just i'm excited about um you know like this is the kind of person like i i like having this kind of person in my life for all of the unknown it all looks like a, a it's more of the unknown that I want in my life, right? It's more of the like, uh, this is the kind of person that stimulates my mind and my imagination and my curiosity. And I am very excited to be friends with this person, you know? It's just like, oh, she's so cool. She's like such a cool person. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So I, I find I don't run into a lot of people like that. And I, you know, I have my little circle of people you know, and they haven't yeah. expanded that circle in many years and she's a very welcome addition to my little circle well as uh, as someone who is getting older and having his friends die off it is extremely important to keep welcoming people to the circle yeah because many of my dearest friends have passed away already yeah. people it's... who i really care about and people who i would love to have here with me to this day they're gone and so and there aren't people like them out there ever because we're all so unique we are all different so the, i'm not going to get my pal Norman back. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to get some of these people back. And even just the other, I was just at a memorial last week on, uh, for a friend in the, in, in our book club who passed away. Oh. And we knew he was, he was dealing with, uh, cancer had been dealing with cancer and had pretty much exhausted all the treatments, but he was just so, uh, neutral and so clear and so at peace i don't really know his entire internal process but he just seemed at peace so at peace with it that we didn't really know how close he was till the end until yeah. boom he was gone just within a few weeks seemingly or maybe within a month of the last time you know we had seen him at book club uh he's gone and so then I was at the memorial and, and so here we are in book club and we need to find someone new to yeah. join our club. Aww. And I'm the youngest guy and I'll be <laughs> 61 in a couple of weeks. So it's really important to find new people. Yeah. Because those people, that positive energy, those people who love and accept us and enjoy us, for the complex adult beautiful beings that we are those people are what keep us alive yeah they are they are how they are the people through which we channel our feelings and resonate they're the people who are closest to us and help us resonate who we are into the world right they are the antennas anytime any moment we bring our energy into that circle of people around us who love us and we energize them with our own good thoughts and intentions, beliefs, uh, sharing our joy, that resonates because they love us and they accept us, that more easily resonates through all of those people. And so that's like having a supercharged, super powered antenna. There really is the power of the community or the tribe it's super important to have that and so research shows that our social network is an important component of our material well-being of our physical health yeah and so that's something that is a really worthy pursuit if we do if we do nothing in our lives but bring nicer people into our lives not even that we need to have great uh, material ambitions but if we do the only thing we do is bring nicer people into our lives 
or say hello to the barista every day at the local coffee shop or build some kind of community around us that will improve our health. No, oh, I like that. I like that. I mean, I like that as a mindfulness. Um, so just an exercise in, in, you know, thinking about our interactions a little more, um, well, thoughtfully. Uh, I, I think that I do tend to go about my day and my routines and my things very, um, in sort of an insular manner. And I think the pandemic kind of forced that on a lot of us anyway. Mm -hmm. And then coming out of it, I don't know, like there's a, a, a percentage of people who seem to have almost turned a meaner <laughs> from it. And then yet there are so many really awesome people who I think realize that they crave more interaction and welcome it kindly. And I, I like finding those people, but I realize I have to be open myself in order to connect and find and, you know, receive <laughs> kind of those, those sorts of um, personalities and, and other people that are out there. Yeah, it's not an idle pursuit. We need to be willing to take action, like pick up the phone and say, hey, yeah. come over for dinner. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's right? also let's meet, let's meet for let's let's meet at the coffee shop. Yeah. Well, that's that is one of those things too that I um I don't know, like without all this, you know, again with the pandemic, right? Like we we're putting this this sort of like opposite of social situation. And so coming out of it, it and we're still kind of in a weird gray area with it, you know, but like um for me, I don't have the conferences and stuff. That was always my way of meeting people is mm -hmm. like, I would speak at conferences, which makes it easy when you're a little on the introverted side or, or whatever, like not to define or over categorize, but just in my past experience, being a speaker helped me a lot because people will come up and talk to me first. And yes. then from there, the conversation either carries or it doesn't and you move on and, and it, it made it a lot easier for me to have conversations with people by putting myself out there in this one way opened up my world, right? And then when I didn't have those anymore, those conferences just went away and they don't just light right back up, right? With as things have reopened. No, you're right. The world is different and and, and also there are, you know, lots of other people out there trying to get back out there. And so the, I don't know, I feel like the pool is even bigger now too. So it's just not as easy. Uh, it's, it's funny because it reminded me of when I was in my uh, late twenties, early thirties, I was working for a corporate training company called On The Edge Productions and we were producing what you could would at the time you would call human potential trainings. Yeah. These were for everything from executives to salespeople at AT&T. And we would do them, let's say 40 to 100 people at a time or 150 even. And some of them would be a couple of day events. Some of them would be an entire week at a remote site like uh, we and some of them would be with kids even uh, through a foundation called the Breakthrough Foundation that worked with inner city kids. We would do these trainings, and these were such a joy for me. I felt that I was everything about this was positive and expansive and spiritually fulfilling. I remember at the end of it really, because a lot of this was, almost all of this was for our component that we did was like an out, outward bound style stuff that we would do outside. It would be everything from going to Red Rocks and having people stand on the edge of a cliff and then us having a waist harness on them, they're blindfolded and we cantilever them out over the cliff with a waist harness 
and then we take the blindfold off and <laughs> yeah, like, just scare the crap out of them, but take care of them, right? Yeah. They're safe, but they can experience leaning, leaning, leaning yeah. over, the, over the cliff. And so th those types of things, which to me, for most people were mind blowing, the stuff that we did with them because they had never rock climbed. They had never walked a tightrope 40 feet in the air. They had never jumped off of a 12 inch platform into a parachute harness from 40 feet up in a tree. And they had never done these types of team events, these team initiative events. So these, at that time in my life, I was so high all the time. At the end of the day, I was just energized from yeah. all of the positive people I met, all of the people who were in love with themselves because they had experienced something new about themselves that they might never have had the chance to do had they not come out with us on this crazy day. And because I knew what they could do, I know as a climber and somebody who had built these, we call them initiative events, these kind of outward bound like uh, challenges. As somebody building those, I knew that most people could do them. Yeah. But they didn't. So I would believe I was the one person who got to believe in them for that day or that few days and make them feel safe and get them to explore a part of their world that they never thought existed. That's so cool. And so that energy was incredible. I felt like I had my, you know, we've talked about this kind of like feeling of like having my six guns strapped yeah. on. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I am Wyatt Earp. I am in the OK Corral and this is exactly where I should be. And like you, that type of business went away with the, this was in the late eighties mm -hmm. there, you know, the budgets at big corporations, yeah. things got, started getting more competitive. Corporations were consolidating, they were cutting costs and human development no longer really mattered. What mattered was serving the, you know, there was, a, there was a, that was kind of a, human potential renaissance maybe and then all of a sudden now it's the shareholder value renaissance yeah right <laughs> but where and so for me that feeling of like where do i get that like again i'm asking that too it's like where where are those people who are that open who are where do i get to work in an environment where people are that open and i'm meeting new people and i'm making incredible friends i was i was meeting people and then all of a sudden i'm just i'm just flying to texas hanging out with them right it just was it was like no brainer oh <laughs> that person is so cool i'm just I'm going to, when I, when I'm done with my work in, in New Jersey or Vermont, then I'm just going to fly to Texas. And I'm going to hang out with them. And then uh, I'm going to go back to Seattle. And then this other person that I met, she's going to drive up and hang out with me in Seattle. And then all of a sudden, this person who just drove up and hung out, who I met randomly on one of these trainings, all of a sudden we're living together in Seattle, <laughs> right? We're boyfriend and girlfriend and we're, we're living this wonderful life, right? For a very short period of time, these milestones of just things, everything came naturally. I was really energized all the time, all the people around me because of the nature of our work. Yeah they had to be open and if and if they weren't open they didn't have to participate so it was very and and so this energy uh, everything was effortless 
Yeah. I felt like all of my skills that I had at the time were being engaged. Every yeah. positive cell in my body was being uh, exercised and I was getting rewarded for it energetically. I wasn't rich, but I was free. Yeah. Pretty free to be myself. I got in trouble for it a few times in front of audiences. I was up in front of an audience and I had too much energy. <laughs> and right, like, hey, like Seattle, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, and I had the boss comes up to me, goes, you just scared the shit out of all those people in the room. And don't you ever do that again? Oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> too much. <laughs> Reel it back. It was too much. It was too much because I, I didn't necessarily make them feel safe. Right. And I yeah. wasn't old enough. I wasn't old enough for experience to know that. Yeah. But that's something that comes with time too. Right. Usually. And I thought I had to be somebody up there instead yeah. of just doing this, doing the stuff that I needed to do for them, which was show them how to be safe and that they could trust us. And yeah, all of these <laughs> like, oh, take, it, <laughs> take it down a notch. <laughs> Are you ready to rock? Yeah, American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh. Pathways. So that's a, so that's a long way oh i will say one other thing uh uh we were setting up a train i was in Colorado. the the epitome of this moment for me in this period where i was doing these trainings and working with these guys uh was we were in gunnison colorado and we were setting up a training course there this was for the breakthrough foundation it was for kids who are inner city kids who are really troubled gang members and the way it worked is you would you uh there was like one parent from the community for every two kids that were part of this program and the parents would just hang out and be like guardians chaperones and then the kids and these are kids from rival gangs too would be put in the dorms and and then eventually kids who had gone through the program, those were kids were rotated in. And for every two kids that were new, one kid who had gone through the program was there. And so these kids were scared because they're like from the city and all of a sudden they're in the, they're in the, you know, they're in Gunnison, Colorado. Yeah. Right. And they might be from, they might be from the projects in Connecticut or they've never been in wilderness like this. They've always had, stuff around them and so their defensive behaviors could be you know magnified yeah but the work with these kids to see these kids open up loving each other being vulnerable supporting each other it was just mind-blowing yeah and so we're staying at uh, probably gonna some college in gunnison in the dorms and it was just such a beautiful day I picked up a chair from my dorm room and then I just walked down the hallway. I walked outside and then I just placed it in the middle of a giant field to kind of enjoy the, the you know, cause you're at 7,000 feet and it, you're, it's Colorado. It's right. You've, you've done enough road trips to yeah. know what it feels like. It looks like it's just vast and it's open and the sky is blue. And I just put my chair in the middle of this field and then within half an hour, other people just start coming out with their chairs from their dorm rooms and they just sit down next to me and we're all just looking at Colorado. <laughs> That's really awesome. It was, it was just, I was so high, let's say, and resonating how grateful and fun and how cool this life I had at that moment was that other people just came to join me. They just came out there. People just sat down, other uh, teachers or, you know, parent chaperones or program directors, and then just 
they're just sitting down next to me. I love it, that. Yeah, it was an incredible acknowledgement. I didn't even, and then one of the guys is like, I want you to come out and work with my school. I have a marching band. But it was so far beyond what I expected or thought that I was even capable of at the time that I wasn't able to close the deal to fly out to work with this <laughs> guy's marching band because uh, it was just, right? I, it, it was beyond my imagination. I was yeah. at the peak of my feeling and my imagination for what my life could be at that moment. This right. actually, what a beautiful way to bring it back to what we talked about at the beginning where like sometimes you... You, you put everything down there like for me I put everything down and then now it's looking back at me everything I put down and you say now ask for more like yeah. and that's you know like that is uh, that's it and at that time you know even for me when I explained that last role I was like wow everything great done you know, and I didn't even think it didn't even occur to me to go, well, what else might be? And it's not about taking advantage of the situation, but but actually just opening opportunity for more to happen, for more energy to come, whether it's energy or opportunity or, or whatever, but like putting more out there so that you don't reach an end point. There's not a stopping point. Because yeah, the stopping point is in, is completely arbitrary. That yeah. there is no the stopping point doesn't exactly. exist. Exactly. It's, but it's if you don't like, put more out there, you will run into you'll run into a, like a, an edge of sorts. You know, the yeah. edge of the glass or whatever. And like, and and I've experienced that multiple times throughout my life where I put stuff out there and then I get I get there I, I get there faster than I thought I would. And then I'm like, now what? You know, now I gotta, I gotta come up with some more stuff. But if you're always kind of habitually um, or routinely like putting more out there, there, there's always a better to become, right? <laughs> yes. Back there. Yeah. So I feel like that was such a nice um, your story. You took us back to that point so nicely. Yeah, I didn't know that was coming, but it just reminded <laughs> me of that that uh, that moment where the world came to. I was sitting in what I, you know, imagined was the middle of nowhere on this lawn in front of this summer abandoned dorm in the summer, which had a few of us staying there who were running these courses, and then all of a sudden people started coming to me and then somebody's offering me a job <laughs> like, in what? the middle of no, <laughs> nowhere but you know like I want you to work with my, and I didn't even know I love that I didn't even know that possibility existed for me yeah I did and so because I didn't know or I didn't believe or I wasn't open I wasn't able to close the deal. I kept working with this development company and um, we did a bunch more stuff, but I didn't know at the time that I could ask for more, that there yeah. was better or different, or even that I could do it on my own. Yeah. It, it's interesting that the paths that lead us to that kind of understanding, to that kind of knowing. And I, I've been on that in my own way as well very parallel like I did I just didn't realize at the time that I I could have you know could have done I do you know I don't know I feel like my background has led me to a good place right and that I, I did learn along the way like I don't have to do this under this umbrella or in this container that has been defined I can do it in a different way but it's you know you learn as you go and I don't know, we can always say, oh man, if I'd learned it sooner, where would I be now? But it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> no, because there, there's the, all of those options uh, and more still exist. It's not that, it's not that the quantum probabilities went away. Right. It's just that our recognition of the quantum probabilities has matured. <laughs> you know, and I mean, 
operative word mature, I think it's important to remember that it's never too late, right? Like we're still, it does, we're still going, as long as we're still going, there's, the doors are open. Absolutely. That I, I have, uh, I have another story about uh, meeting Jack LaLanne. If you might, Jack LaLanne might be, do you, do you remember Jack LaLanne? Mm-mm. Well, Jack LaLanne was a little guy, a little French guy who had a t- the longest running TV show in history at the time, maybe, uh, and maybe the only one that beat him is Regis Philbin. Okay. That one I know. <laughs> okay. Well, Jack Lane was a fitness guru in the sixties, okay. maybe even late fifties, early sixties. He had a show that was on TV every day where he showed people how to do stuff at home. Oh, nice. And just, you could YouTube Jack Lane, but he was for for, ba- for boomers like me, Jack Lane was one of the more famous fitness people in the world. Before Joe Weider, before Arnold Schwarzenegger, Richard it was Jack Lane. Oh, that's Before great. Richards, way before Richard Simmons. <laughs> and he was the guy who trained on Venice Beach, did stunts. He was the guy, all of that Gold's Gym stuff that evolved on Venice Beach that you know, the Charles Atlas, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all of that stuff. Jack Lane was one of the seminal people of that movement. And so to me, because I saw him on TV all the time, um, not all the time, but I saw him, he was always, he just had a show. He was always the icon of this kind of fitness and taking care of yourself. And when he was in his late 70s, maybe early 80s, I had a chance to have dinner with him and his wife, Elaine LaLanne, Jack and Elaine LaLanne. And he had so much energy and so much juice at the dinner table. And he used to do stunts, like these fitness stunts, like 2,000 push-ups, 7,000 pull-ups, or 8,000 sit-ups, and 2,000 pull-ups in a day kind of thing. He would do these stunts to bring attention to his movement of fitness, physical fitness for people as a way to improve your life. And he told me that even in his 70s, he got up at 5 a.m. every morning. He uh, He would lift for two hours, he would swim for an hour, have his breakfast, and then start his day. And he was still teaching fitness, had all kinds of initiatives. And and he he was like slapping me in the belly under the table because, you know, maybe this is 15 years ago or 20, 15 or more years ago, 20 years ago. He's slapping me in the belly. He's going, man, and if everyone were like you, I'd be out of business because I was rock climbing <laughs> all the time. And and and, uh, and I and I and I go, yeah, I can do some pull ups, and I do pull ups on the door frame, right? I grab the door, the 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 uh, trim around the door, the little ledge, and I yeah. start doing pull ups on the ledge from my fingertips. And he goes, I ever tell you the time I did two thousand two thousand pull ups and eight thousand sit ups and. And I go, oh, man, I don't even have a chance here. (laughs) He was singing at the dinner. He was singing songs at the dinner table in key, serenading people at the dinner table. And he was the same person in person as he was on TV. He was exactly the same, the same energy. There was no artifice to him. He was absolutely himself and still in his late seventies, early eighties, still driven on his same mission. He, I go, well, what are you doing now? And he goes, I can't stop. I I'm the luckiest person in the world because from the time I was 14, I knew exactly what I needed to do in life and I'm still doing it. I'm not done. I've still got stuff, so much stuff to do. I've got these, you know, kids nowadays, kids, they need me more than ever. Yeah. They need fitness more than ever. They, they. That's never stopped, has it? No. Uh, 
I just marveled at his juice. Yeah. That he was just so clear and there was so much joy and love in him for what he still had to do and for his mission. And I thought too, it's like, man, he's just a little, he's just a little guy, but he did all of these, you know, he, he's, I mean, maybe he was like five, five or five, you know, but he was on television. So you don't really know how big he is on television, Right. but he was, I mean, just Google, I for any, just for, did just for a minute anyone, ago. For anyone who's listening or watching, just Google Jack LaLanne. For Five, anyone six. who, yeah, for anyone who's into fitness, he is the seminal character in the world of fitness in in America, lifting and being strong and fit and healthy in your body and eating good food. Oh, He's the really guy. Cool. I, I did pull him up on Google and I have to say like, yeah, the, the godfather of modern fitness. Yeah, he is. Cool. But and, yeah, uh, he looks like a nice guy. He was, he was a lovely human being and every more than, more than I would have imagined uh, from seeing him on TV as a kid but having, he was here in Seattle because this was years ago, they were using him to, uh, he was filming commercials for the Washington State Lottery. Oh, very cool. Uh, the, the, the slogan for the Washington State Lottery was lucky for life at the oh, time. That's great. <laughs> and so he was the, he was the poster, poster person for lucky for life. Oh, that's really cool. I was just but kind of that, looking through his stuff here. So but that's to really me, cool. to me, that that kind of groove, that kind of feeling, is what I aspire to. It's what I want to feel about my own life yeah. because I've seen it. I've seen it possible in little bits and pieces. I've had little tastes and feeling feeling I've seen it through other people certainly Jacqueline in that regard was an uh meeting him and seeing that he was legitimate like like who he was who he was and what we imagined through the television screen in the same way that um seeing Mr. Rogers yeah and how yeah he's right just an embodiment of all that is good. Yeah. And hope and but trying to be better. But also absolutely true to his nature. Yeah, exactly. That's like the that. other thing. Pure, the purity of his nature came through. And so that is aspirational for me. Like wanting to be able to have be so clear and so in joy or in love that it resonates, that the that it I continue to attract people to that giant empty space on the lawn, that big, the universe of possibility. Right? The James, what is the James? Wait till we get a James Webb Jr. telescope. <laughs> for even for even bigger, right? James Webb Jr. on Wheaties. <laughs> telescope that you know that gets to sit even further out on the edge of our solar system and spot and look even further into the universe and then all of a sudden think about all the the more things that we will see and understand and comprehend right here in front of us yeah that's the part that's like you know it's hard to wrap your mind around because there's so much and yet i i'm i welcome that so much <laughs> a lack of words but you know like yeah like yeah bring that on bring on because the more that we can see the more we are able to experience for real without even you know the more that it's shared with us um yeah i don't know boy you don't even have to try with those things right but <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's just the thing is like when we are aligned like that, we don't need to try because everything is available to us because we're not anywhere else trying. Yeah. But trying is a distraction, right? We're trying <laughs> to get somewhere. We're trying. The effort, there's a layer of effort and then it, it becomes that push and pull that we've talked about before. And, yeah. you know, if you can kind of back off a little, which again, kind of brings us back to what we were talking about at the beginning. It's like, there's a state of neutral where you kind of see how you feel you self-check and you check on the situation and you kind of go okay how's this going to unfold like i've put this out there and this is where we're at but now you know just try not to push or pull but to let it unfold i guess mm -hmm. that's where i yeah that's where it's it's been for me for a bit and yeah i don't know i feel like my natural inclination is often to <laughs> pull 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 or whatever but mm -hmm. um make it happen faster but i don't feel that right now i don't I haven't felt that in a while where i feel like i need to make things happen faster a little bit at times but less so less so i think with our conversations because it's an awareness mm -hmm. that that's it's just an unnecessary expense of energy to do that when really you can kind of do it in a, a much uh more natural way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm buzzing pretty hard right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this gives us our, our next, our, our uh, fuel mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. move through the next week. I mean, I don't know. That's what I always think of. This is like, it's like such a, um, like filling the gas tank if I had to put a, an analogy around it, but it's such a good Philip <laughs> to get me through to our next call. Yeah. Well, we, like I said, we can do more of this. Um, we can do more of this. <laughs> we can do we more can. of this. And I, I will work towards setting up the, the professional producing system for our, for this, the, the, our we'll get an app, we'll get show. an app, we'll get an app set up and make, right. this, make this easier for ourselves. All right. Well, and I, I am out here and I can do more, um, too. I get, I get in my little derailments, um, often, but, oh, hi, Ernie. But yeah, I get in my little derailments, but I am out here. So if you're ever on and working on it, like I think we did that on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon at one point we were like, you know, I got, I finally got everything wrangled and downloaded into one spot. So I need to do yeah. last week and I'll do this week as well. But um, all right, well, I'll, yeah. I'll get those, I'll get those up, but the setting the system up. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. In the meantime, we keep working on our little things, uh, like our, our words and our, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're coming along. We are. We well, are. Stefan. Just, well, Jamie. Thank you for another amazing conversation. And I look forward to next week when we yes. do this again. I look forward to next week as well. And I'm wishing you a joyous, prosperous, and creatively catalytic week. Right back at you. Great word choices. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Cheers. Bye.